What if I told you that this $170 upgrade can save your home from power surges, fried electronics, and lightning strikes, potentially saving you thousands of dollars? Well, on today's video, I'm gonna show you guys how easy it is and how quickly you can install this whole home surge protector onto your existing electrical panel. So, let's get started. Now before we get started, some of you may be wondering why I'm installing a surge protector when I already have one installed right here on my electrical panel. Well, either my house or right next to my house has been hit by lightning at least three times already since we've lived here for the last three years. Which let me show you real quick, right here. Now that last lightning strike right there happened a few weeks ago and it took out some of my landscape lighting and transformers for my landscape lighting. Thankfully, it didn't damage anything else or damage anything with the panel. Now what has me concerned right now is that we've had three lightning strikes on this house damaging various different electronics and electrical appliances. Yet that surge protector right there has never once tripped or went off and that green light on it has always stayed green stating that the surge protector is in use and fine. So I'm pretty sure I either have a bad surge protector or it's not doing what the company says it'll do. And one last thing before we dig into our electrical panel, please, if you don't feel comfortable doing this, contact a licensed electrician and have them perform this task for you because you will be operating around live electrical wires that could potentially shock you or harm you. So with that said, let's install the new surge protector. So real quick, this is the box that it comes in. You'll get an instruction manual and you'll get the product itself with the wires wrapped up. Now my electrical panel is not in the best place, so I apologize that the camera angles aren't gonna be the best, but I'll do the best I can. The first step is you need to take your panel cover off so you can access the wires inside, which all that takes normally is a square tip. I got a stubborn screw down here, so I'm gonna use a flathead. Now that the panel cover's off, we can actually see what we got going on on our electrical panel. And let's just say we need to change a few things before we just hook that other surge protector in here. I say that because this current surge protector right here is hooked into this 30 amp breaker up here, which is also feeding the dryer. Now according to the instructions that Siemens has, is you're really not supposed to double tap a breaker. So the first thing I'm gonna do right now is turn off this breaker for the dryer right here before I forget. The green light is now off on the surge protector so we can start working on the wires that's on that breaker. Now again, confirming this breaker's off, we're gonna remove the two wires that are serving the surge protector and leave the dryer wires. Don't forget to tighten the wire back down for the dryer. Same thing for the bottom wire. And again, tighten up that bottom wire. And now I'm gonna flip the breaker back on for the dryer. Real quick, so we don't have this exposed wire in the panel, I'm gonna snip it further back. Now that the two hot wires are out, let's go ahead and pull them out of the panel. Now let's figure out where the ground goes to, which is about right in the middle here on the bus bar. I can see it going in, so you need to unscrew it and pull it out. Tighten it back down if there's another ground wire on it. Lastly, let's get the neutral disconnected and pull the box out. Just like that, the old one's out. Let's just throw this in the garbage. Now we got a new surge protector, which real quick, this one says it'll cover up to 140 kiliamps, which is basically a lot of electricity. So if there is a surge, that's how much it can handle. They do make a few that are bigger than this, but the price tag on those is a lot more. So with this bolt shield, you got an extra wire compared to normal surge protectors. And that's this wire right here with the smaller black, brown, and white wire sticking out of a black wire casing. They put this on here for other controls or alarming systems, which we're not gonna worry about. And all we need to worry about is these four wires they have right here. The green and yellow one is for ground. The two black wires are your two hot wires and your white wire is your neutral wire. It does come with a nut pre-installed which you want to make sure you take this off before you slide the wires through the hole. So real quick just so you size of the whole difference between our old surge protector versus our new surge protector. The Siemens one is slightly bigger than the other one we had installed. So we need to find the correct size knockout and knock it out so our Siemens surge protector can fit in that one and then close up the other hole using either electrical tape or little special aluminum pieces that you can slide in the hole and crimp them down to close that hole up. Show you guys real quick. This is the knockout I'm going to use. I got to pop out that one and then the one that's slightly bigger than the smallest one and it should fit right there. Now that the hole's made, let's slide our wires through. Just like that, it fits pretty good. A quick tip with your locking nuts. See how it's beveled up right now? You want to make sure that the beveled up area is going into the panel so that it can grab it and lock it down. Slide your locking nut through your wires. Start threading it on. Once it gets snug, start using a flathead to help keep screwing it. 
All right, so that's nice and snug right now on the panel. Now I was a little concerned with it actually mounting into the panel if it was gonna be kind of flimsy, but it's really not that heavy. So just having that locking net hold it in place is perfectly fine. Don't worry about having to put anything below it to keep it supported because it's nice and sturdy right now. And if your panel's mounted properly flush to the wall, this is meant to go into any of the proper knockouts. So it'll be nice and flush to the wall as well. So this wire that we already talked about right here with the three smaller wires in it, we're just gonna curl this up and put it down below because we're not worried about it. But if we ever need it later on and want to add that alarming system, we'll have it accessible. First wire we want to install is the ground. Now Siemens also says that you want to make these wires as short as possible because that helps with the transfer of the lightning strike to the surge protector. The longer the wire is, the less chance of the surge protector protecting your whole house. So make them as short as you can. And this ground wire is also 10 gauge wire. So I know where I need to go. I'm gonna tap it in the bus bar right in the middle roughly. So let's get to work. Next, let's do our neutral wire. Same thing for the neutral. Try to keep it as short as possible. I have to go all the way up to the top to make it work. So that's what we're gonna do. And the neutral wire is 10 gauge wire as well. Now we just have our two hot legs to install, which looking at the panel, there's nowhere for us to put a breaker. But I currently have one breaker that I'm using for my well pump, but my well pump doesn't work right now and I'm on city water. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna remove this wire from the well pump right here and pull it out and we'll put the wire for the surge protector in place of the well pump. And Siemens recommends using a 20 or a 30 amp breaker for this device. So I'm gonna go grab a 30 amp breaker and put it in in place of the 20. So now that I got my 30 amp breaker, this is a square D breaker for a square D panel. Whatever electrical panel you have, make sure you're buying the right breakers because there are different electrical panels out there that use different breakers. Again, confirm the powers off to the breaker we're working on and disconnect the wire. In my case, I'm just gonna cut them because I'm gonna pull the wire out. Let me finish pulling this wire to the panel and we'll resume the surge protector. Now that that wire is out of the way and out of the panel, let's finish hooking up our two hot legs. The first thing we need to do is take this 20 amp breaker out, which we're gonna use a flathead screwdriver to do. In order to do this, put pressure on the opposing breaker, shove that in and it should pop right off. And just keep popping and pull it off. Now let's put the 30 amp in. Same thing for the 30 amp. Make sure you leave it off while you're installing the wires. Now that we have two black wires left, you may be wondering, well, where does each wire go on this breaker? Well, for this instance, it does not matter. All it is is two hot legs that when you put to this breaker right here, makes it 240 volts. So cut them to the proper length and hook them up to the breaker. Push that wire in and tighten it down. Now let's do the last one. Again, these wires, 10 gauge wires. And push that one in and tighten it down. Now I know my electrical panel isn't the prettiest panel, but just make sure that the screw holes where you're gonna screw the screws back in are not gonna hit any of the wires you just installed or any wires that you moved around. Now lastly, we need to turn the breaker on, make sure that it works. And just like that, the unit turned on as you heard that initial beep. And now you have your two green lights on for A and C, indicating that the unit is in normal operation right now. It also says right on here, green is on, means protection is operation. Then off is loss of power or protection. And red flashing is an alarm condition. Now the last thing I wanna cover, cause I know a lot of you are gonna call me out on it, is torque spec on all the screws we just tightened down with wires underneath of them. Now I'm not gonna lie to you guys, normally I just do hand tight, but there is an actual torque spec, which according to the manufacturer for Square D is 20 to 30 foot pounds for basically all the screws that we tighten down. Now I definitely do recommend using the torque spec as that's what the manufacturer states. And especially with the potential of a big surge to go through the wires we just installed, you wanna make sure they're nice and snug. Now, all we need to do is slap our panel back on and make sure we relabel that circuit breaker as surge protector. And just like that, you have a $170 device that can save you over thousands, if not tens of thousands of dollars in damages if lightning ever strikes or surge ever happens in your house. Overall time-wise, this project took me less than one hour to do and using some basic hand tools to get everything apart and back together. So hopefully if my house gets by lightning again, the surge will go directly to the surge protector 
saving me time and money down the road so that I can just quickly replace that and not have to worry about replacing anything else. If you guys have any questions, comments, or concerns, please leave them down in the comment section below. And if you think I could have done a better job doing something, please let me know. And if there's a surge protector out there that you guys think is better than the Simmons FSPD, please let me know in the comment section and I'll check it out. Thanks for watching this video. I hope you guys enjoyed it and learned a lot as I did through this whole process. Please remember to like and share this video and don't forget to hit the subscribe button. And I hope you guys have a great rest of your day. I'll see you in the next one.